Good morning! And welcome to Kindly Yours. The place where you come in to receive the self-care and kindness tips you need for handling setbacks, negative emotions, fears, and failures. The space that takes you deep into the quiet, compassionate corner within your heart, where you rest, recenter, release, and come back stronger and more resilient than ever. I'm Mike Popovich, founder of Phoenix Internal Arts Academy, the home and heart base for your individual and collective evolution. And I am Lulua, his partner in crime, in life, and at work. And our mission here at Phoenix is to help you unlock your inner game master. The Phoenix way. Today's theme is show yourself a kindness by shifting your focus from achieving and competing to unplugging and tuning in. This concept is far from new. We hear about disconnecting momentarily to recharge and reconnect all the time in corporate, no? And yet, it is more of a take a break, have a Kit Kat sort of deal. We are applauded when we take a 10 minute break or a half an hour walk or a couple of days of social media detox. We are generally okay about holding clear boundaries between our work time and the time we reserve for ourselves, our families, and our friends. Today, though, we're stretching that box a little. Well, a little more than just a little. It's okay if you need to take a little time to recharge. And it's also okay, and dare I say a good thing, when you need a couple of months or even years where you shift your attention to filling your cup. Giving more than you receive as a principle is Great, it's fantastic. Service does fill your cup. We're Mystery School initiates, and we do our best to live by that, by the principle of service. And there are so many times when you receive back tenfold what you give, and that fills your cup. But that's not what we're talking about today, though. See, thing is, if you're an achiever, if you've lived your life focused on doing more, winning more, being there for others more and more for a decade, if not decades of your life, you have been accumulating moments where you gave at your own expense, at the expense of your health and your dreams and maybe even your self-respect. I know we have, and that taxes you. It eats away at you slowly. And one day, you wake up depleted. I mean, really depleted. Because over all these years, you have been slowly withdrawing from your energetic bank account. You worked 10-hour days because it just needs to get done. You stayed in that job with an abusive manager because... A responsible person does not leave a job until they have another one secured. And you did your work and other people's work in your company and at home because, don't worry, I can handle it. Well, what's the alternative? To be responsible? To risk losing respect and missing out on the next promotion? That's not you. I know because I've been there. Seven years ago, I hit that place where I no longer had the energy to be the guy who stepped up and took on all the challenges. I reached the point where I needed to take a step back and take care of myself in a big way. I couldn't be the person I prided myself for being, that guy who steps in and saves the day. After years of, don't worry, I got it, I can handle it, lean in and step up, I hit empty. I mean, where the fuel tank is empty and the reserves are empty and I borrowed all I can borrow in energy and I am out, absolute empty. I couldn't but take that time. I was given no choice. As I stepped back, I saw how other people started stepping up when I previously had. I saw how other people were saving the day when I previously had. And I saw how other people were getting promotions and praise. Well, you guessed it. That made me jealous. It made me insecure. And I saw my fear. If I don't save the day, then what am I here for? What am I good for? 
it is good, even great, to be a person of initiative because you believe you have value to offer. It's unhealthy when you hog initiative because you're worried about what will happen when you're not giving. By me stepping back, I actually did a kindness to myself by allowing myself the space to figure out what will really fill my cup. And it led me from being a quality assurance manager at an aerospace manufacturing company to being here with you today, doing what lights me up and fills my cup on a whole other level. But before I got here, it took me years where I worked on being kind to myself as I replenished and focused on recovering as opposed to giving. And I did a kindness to others who now had the space to shine and grow. That space I was assuming all for myself. And I know because I've been there. Three years ago, I moved back to Toronto. I was in the middle of a messy separation, missing the stability, my family back home, my friends. But at least I had my work. I was working with an exceptional manager and an incredible colleague at a company I was obsessed with, helping our wonderful grads get jobs in tech. And then my manager left and my colleague left and COVID hit and the job market suffered and our division received almost no support or direction. And I lost my job. I remember distinctly that moment of choice. Right after I got separated, I was given the option to take a mental leave of absence. And I really needed it. But did I take it? No. We are not people who step back. We are people who lean in. We are strong people. After I lost my job, I would meditate for four hours a day, be in the hot tub for another four, and sleep for ten. For six months. I wish I could tell you, and in that time I realized, but I can't, because in that time I realized nothing. But after, I realized that I had a real problem with grind. I never stopped and asked myself, what do I need? What do I want? Only, what is needed of me? What should I do? What is my duty? And I decided that I am done with that. Done. And now, I am here with you today, doing what lights me up and fills my cup on another level. It can be downright terrifying, embarrassing, and painful. There are no two ways about it. What if I lose my job? What if my partner leaves me? What if my life falls apart? And sometimes all that happens, and your life does fall apart. And when it does, mostly, people will not make it easier. They'll, without meaning to, judge you for it, most often, in what they do without saying. And they'll shame you for it, and they'll try to prop you up and drag you back up at any cost. I can't tell you not to blame them. But if you can, soften around the blame. They're not used to you being like this. Or they've never given themselves that space to be like this. If you're experiencing that need for a deep replenishing retreat, we know our raw share here will, will not make your problem go away. But we want you to know you're not alone and you are not judged. There's nothing unnatural about you or your experience. It is only that we live in a world that has forgotten the importance of slow it down. I mean, way down. So do yourself a kindness. And as much as you can, release the judgment. Release the expectation. Take what you need. It may feel like your life is over for a little while and that's okay. It may feel like this won't end for a longer while still. And that's okay too. From our experience, those dramatic breakdowns can help you radically evolve if you let them. Now's not the time to think about the what will happen if. Now 
do yourself a kindness and give yourself the permission to be where you are, exactly where you are now. Much love.